Now, I want you to open today to Matthew 7. Hold your place in Matthew 7. And then I want you to go back over to Mark 11. Matthew 7 and Mark 11. We're going to start again in Mark chapter 11. Jesus has been teaching us from there. But hold your place in Matthew 7 because we'll be right back by there. And we're on this series called Overcoming Faith overcoming faith when people say faith you never know what they mean well my faith is very important to me okay well that that could mean something great and that could mean about nothing that could mean i was raised in church or raised with a religion and i, I don't want to go against that because my mom will be upset at me see so we really don't know what it means when people are saying their faith is important to them but what we're hearing from jesus is how faith actually can move mountains it is so enormously impactful releasing the very power of god and jesus is teaching us how to do it proficiently how to do it accurately how to do it repeatedly not just hit and miss every once in a while we have a faith accident no he's teaching us how to do it and he wants us to be able to do it regularly so let's listen to him again. Let's read this from Mark chapter 11, the 22nd through the 24th verses. In fact, let me tell you this quickly. It was yesterday morning. I took Kimberly to the airport, as I mentioned, early in the morning. And then uh, I, I got back from the airport, and I needed to get new tires on her car. So I drove directly to one of the, uh, a place to do that. But I got there 20 to 25 minutes before they opened. They opened at 7 o'clock. So I got there, and so I'm just sitting in the car, and I just started going over Mark 11, 22 to 24. I didn't have a Bible with me, but I got it memorized, so I just started meditating on it, just started saying it. Have faith in God, for sure, I say to you, whoever says this mountain, be removed. Just kept saying it over and over. And as I'm meditating on it, boy, I'm feeling something happen in my spirit just by the words of Jesus coming through my heart into my mind and I'm feeling my faith lift and I'm seeing into things and I'm, I'm seeing into what he wants to say this weekend just by meditating and the thought hit me, Jerry, why have you not asked everybody to memorize these three verses since they are so potent, powerful, revelatory, insightful, that will help us to be able to get answers from God. And here I am in the car, and I'm enjoying taking advantage of being lifted and blessed by the memorization of the word, just meditating. And I, I just had this thought, Jerry, why haven't you asked everybody to memorize this so that they could have this same thing happen with them? So now I'm doing it. I'm saying to you, I would like everybody for you, not for me, but for you to memorize Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. You can go on to the 25th verse, which goes right along with it about forgiveness, but specifically about faith, 22, 23, and 24. And let me tell you, these three words, like many passages in the Bible, these three verses are verses that we should, on occasion, just rehearse and go back over and lift ourselves to become precise with getting answers from God precise with using faith to release precise with using faith to release the power of God into our lives these are real and Jesus said these things so that they could happen so I'm giving that assignment to you you take it I trust you to do it but mark 11 22 to 24 so let's read these words now these powerful words of Jesus from that we'll read from the New King James if you don't have that translation that's all right there are a lot of good ones but if you don't have it, follow along on the screens as we read aloud, and that way it won't sound confusing to everybody. Mark 11, 22 to 24, reading loudly and together, let's read. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, we've been on this for a few weeks now, uh, two weeks, I think. And so this is number three now 
And so we've been letting Jesus teach us, and it's been so insightful. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. So insightful, and it will be that way today. But let me just rehearse a couple things here that the Lord has said to us. Jesus said in verse 22, have faith in God. Now, I'm not reading, once again, I'm not reading the whole context, but what happened was the disciples and Jesus had been going back and forth between Bethany and Jerusalem. And this one day, they had gone from Bethany. They stay in Bethany the night, and then they'll go to Jerusalem during the day. And they're coming back one late afternoon from Jerusalem to Bethany, and they walk by a fig tree, and Jesus decides to walk over to the fig tree to see if there's fruit on it. And when he gets there and realizes there's no fruit on it, he just says this, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Talking to the tree. That's all he said. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And then he proceeded to walk on. Well, the next morning, when they're coming back from Bethany, headed to Jerusalem, Peter looks over, he sees the fig tree, and it had withered up from the roots. I mean, something that normally would have taken maybe weeks, it had happened, that, that thing is dead, shriveled up. And he said, Master, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And then this is the response. Jesus said, have faith in God. See, so the teaching that he's given us now is about faith in God. Have faith in God. Okay, and then we saw this in the 23rd verse. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So we notice that there's a power combination between saying and believing what you say. And Jesus said, if you can speak words and believe that what you're saying will be done, you'll have whatever you say. Now, this is Jesus. I know this makes our minds go tilt. Like, well, wait a minute. We're not God. We're not even the Son of God like you are. We're not eternal, like we haven't been with God eternity past. We're not the creator. And yet Jesus is saying this because we were created in the image of God and in the likeness of God with his, capac his type of capacities. God with his, capac his type of capacities. And Jesus is actually showing us that we can do the things that God does. From the very first chapter of the Bible, you remember in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. What's the deep? The oceans. The whole earth was covered with oceans. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. Boom. Light. See, God said it. Now let me ask you this question. It's very simple. Do you believe when God said, let there be light, that he believed that there would be light when he said it? Of course he believed it. Of course he believed it. So he believed in his heart, and he spoke what he believed with his mouth. Let there be light. How? Now this place that's dark now has light. And then God said, let there be a firmament, an atmosphere. We're talking about the atmosphere that we breathe, that gives sustenance to all animal life, all human life, all the plant life, this whole atmosphere. Let there be a firmament, an atmosphere. Boom, and it was so. Let the dry land appear. And all of a sudden it's so. All these continents, right? Let there be animals. Let there be plants, vegetation, fruit trees. Let there be winged birds of the air. Let there be sea creatures. And God would say it, believing in his heart, and it would happen. And he would say it, believing in his heart, and it would happen. And now here's Jesus telling us, that we can actually employ this same process of saying and believing and seeing things come to pass. He said, you can do that for assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. So Jesus is, if I could use just a slang, blowing our minds and telling us that whoever can do what we saw God start in Genesis 1 to do and do all the way through the rest of the Bible. 
God does this. He told us that we can do this. See, that, that's hard for us to understand, but let me just tell you two things. Number one, this is the Son of God talking, and number two, this is documented in inspired Scripture. In other words, this is true even if your mind says, I don't see how that could be true. It is true. It is true. And by the way, many of us have proven it time and time again. And I intend to prove it again and again and again and again. Because it is true. Now, we also learned this. That this power combination, saying and believing, in verse 23, Jesus is talking about saying, and in verse 24, he's talking about praying. See, in verse 23, he said, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. See, he didn't say a thing in the world about praying anything. He's not talking about praying, he's talking about saying. But then in verse 24, he says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you will have them. So verse 23 is talking about saying and verse 24 is talking about praying. Amen. So we see that very clearly that Jesus is talking about both. And I said to you, I believe last week, that we always put such an emphasis on prayer. Well, prayer, prayer is the key. Prayer, we need to pray. And we do need to pray. And prayer is a key. But notice Jesus started off talking about saying before he started talking about praying. And I said this about you, that even though I don't know all of you very personally and I don't follow you around to see everything you do and listen to everything you say, aren't you glad? God does, but I don't. Aren't you glad? Even though I don't know everything you're doing all day long, every day, I suspect that I know this about you. I suspect that I know this about you, that you do more saying than you do praying. Is that right? And so if saying is all that powerful and we're doing a lot more saying than we are praying, then we better learn what Jesus is talking about with saying and believing. Amen? We need to learn what Jesus is talking about with saying and believing. So we've been sitting primarily on that 23rd verse and letting the Lord talk to us from there, but today we want to get down to the 24th verse. So we're, last week we're talking about words of faith, this, today we're talking about words of prayer, prayer, prayer. So let's look at this now in this 24th verse. The 24th verse starts off with the word therefore. And you know whenever you see the word therefore, you have to stop to see what it's there for. Isn't that right? All right. So the word therefore is talking about something preceding. So here's what Jesus is saying. You've got to go back to the 23rd verse, and here's what he said. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be removed, be cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. Therefore, therefore, what does that mean? Because that is true, that a person who says and believes what he says will see it come to pass because that's true. Therefore, I say to you. And he said, therefore, I'm going to say something. Based on that, because that's true, now I'm going to say this. So verse 24 is based on the principle of verse 23. Because saying and believing is so powerful and will actually move mountains, therefore, I say, now let's see what he said. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things... Oh, what a way to start. Whatever things, whatever things, boy, he just blew it wide open, didn't he? In other words, he said, this is not God only one, you know, if you're asking for a new Bible. Yes. If you're asking for more money to give to the ministry, well, yes, he'll do that. No, Jesus didn't say if it's just real spiritual things. No, he said, whatever things, didn't he say that? Whatever things. Whatever things you ask when you pray. No, he said whatever things. Now let's qualify that because hermeneutics is the proper interpretation of the Bible, the principles to properly interpret the Word of God. And there are. You can't just take one verse or three verses or one passage of the Bible and ignore the rest of the Bible and use that to build your doctrine 
And even though there are other parts of the Bible that contradict your interpretation, you can ignore that. No, that's not the way the Bible's written. Because it's all the Word of God, that means that if God said something else about that subject, you need to interpret this in light of that as well. For example, 1 John 5, 14 is where God said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. So, in other words, the confidence that we have is we're asking according to his will. Let me give you an example of this, okay? Here Jesus is saying, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you're assuming you shall have them, okay? So here's Jerry. I've been married 32 years to Kimberly. And what if I said, you know what? Praise God, whatever things. Yeah, it's time to upgrade. I need an upgraded model. Yeah, I've been married to this one 32 years. I need an upgrade. It's time for an upgraded model. I need a new model. Yeah, I need something fresh, something new. I said, that's 32 years old now. Yeah, Jesus said, whatever things, whatever. Woo, I'm going to get me a new wife. Now, how many of you know God's not going to answer that prayer? Isn't that right? See, so, yes, Jesus is saying this, but he's saying this in the context of the rest of this Bible so that we understand that, no, we cannot just set our faith to cause God to do something that is out of his character and will and word to do. Like, can you imagine us saying, I'm going to believe, I'm going to set my faith and believe that God will sin. I'm going to set my faith and believe that God will lie. That's ridiculous. See, you're, you're trying to take whatever things and ignore the rest of the Bible. That's not the way you interpret the Bible. See, so what Jesus is talking about is within the will of God, not trying to get outside the will of God, we're not going to get God to accommodate us to get out of his will. He's not going to help us get out of his will. Amen. He's not going to help us do sin and things that are devastating to our spouse and to other people. No, he's not like that. So when Jesus is saying whatever things, he's speaking this in the context of his whole word, and he just knows that you should know that he's saying, I'm blowing this wide open, whatever things, but it's not sinful things, carnal things, hurtful things to everybody else. Amen? Okay. But here's what you need to know. Within the will of God, there is so much that we're not asking for. Within the will of God, there's so much we're not receiving from God. This thing is huge. The will of God is enormous. All these promises are the will of God. See, so when Jesus says, whatever things, we need to, we need to get excited like, man, Jesus is just saying, come on, whatever thing. All right, so let's see what else he has to say. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things, whatever things, whatever things, whatever Things, I, somebody said, man, you're going to go one word at a time. Oh, my goodness. You're going to be glad I did. You're going to be glad I did because if we'll let Jesus speak to us one word at a time, you'll start getting your prayers answered. All right, now watch. Watch this. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Them what? Them things. I know that's bad English, but that's exactly the concept that we need to get in our head. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Them what? them things that you ask for. Are you listening to me? Them things. All right? Now, hold that thought. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, whatever things you ask, I want you to notice, he did not say whatever things you need. No, no, there are a whole lot, of, a whole lot of precious Christians, bless their heart, been in church for years and completely clueless with this. 
and they think that God moves and acts because people need it. And let me tell you this, you were right because God did move and he did act because we did need it, so he sent his son to solve the problem, to pay for sin, to pay for sickness and disease, to bring forgiveness, healing, provision, restoration. Jesus came because we had a need and he so loved us, he acted and sent his son. So now that he solved that through Jesus, now he sent the gospel out so that everybody could know that he did act on need and compassion. And if they will now ask what Jesus has already paid for because we needed him to, it'll be done. But you have to ask. You, we, the whole world needs to be saved. Is God just going to save them because they need to be saved? Say it. No. Let me ask again because that was a weak no. The whole world needs to be saved. Amen. So does that mean because they need to be saved, God's just going to save them all? No. no, the Bible's clear. No. Until they ask, confessing with their mouth. No, no the Bible's clear. No. Until they ask, confessing with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in their heart that God raised him from the dead, even though they need it, it won't happen. How many of you can see that? So this is what Jesus is teaching us, this principle. Whatever things you ask, whatever things you ask. See, you could think, well, God knows I need it. Yes, he does. But James, the book of James says, you have not because you Ask not. Or the New King James, you do not have because you do not ask. Yes, God knows. God knew you needed it before you were born. It has nothing to do with whether or not God knows you need it. He's waiting for you to ask whatever things you ask. Ask. Do you know how many things there are in your life that you need and you thought you asked, but you hadn't even asked? You just think, well, God knows. Yeah, he does, but he's not going to do it. The principle is not he knows. The principle is ask. Amen. Whatever things you ask, ask, ask. In fact, that brings us to Matthew 7. Did you hold your place there? Look at Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew 7, verse 7, Jesus said, ask and it will be given. Now notice this. He didn't say need and it will be given. He didn't say desire and it will be given. He didn't say wish and it will be given. What did he say? Ask and it will be given. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, not the power of the mind. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the mind is very powerful. The mind is very powerful, but you need to understand the principle. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, whatever you think will come to pass. And aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that not every thought that you had just instantly came to pass? How many of you know a lot of marriages would be destroyed? In fact, there'd be some murder going on, isn't that right? If some things people thought came to pass. Come on, amen. amen. See, Jesus didn't say whatever you think will come to pass. He said whatever you ask. Because here's the way he created us. Lots of thoughts can roll around our minds. But we get to choose which thoughts we speak. And which thoughts we act on. Isn't that right? See, so Jesus didn't say whatever things you think while you're praying. No, whatever things you ask. And notice what he said here in Matthew 7, 7. Ask, now let me, let me look at your Bible or look at the screens, right? And help me with this. Let me read it carefully. Ask, and it might be given. You going to let me get away with that? Are you going to let me get away with that? All right, let me try it again. Ask, and it should be given. Let me try it again. Ask, and it could be given. Ask, and it probably will be given. All right, let me try. Now listen, this is, this is, this is, I'm going to upgrade. Ask, and almost without exception, it will be given. Now you know, if your prayers were answered almost without exception, that would be a significant upgrade. Would you admit that? If your prayers were answered almost without exception, that'd be a significant upgrade. And yet, that's not what Jesus said. See, when Jesus talks about prayer, 
he just speaks with such absoluteness, some, this matter-of-factness. And, and we disbelieve him because it just sounds too good to be true. But this is the way Jesus always taught. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And if you have a trouble with verse 7, don't read verse 8. Because verse 8 says, for everyone who asks receives. Amen. Not everyone who needs receives. Not everyone who desires receives. Everyone who what? Ask. Asks. This is one of the places we've gone wrong. We're not asking. Ask and it will be given. Ask and it will be given. Jesus is always absolute. Like in John 16, 23. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. That's just the way Jesus talked about prayer. He talked about prayer. And let me tell you why. Why when Jesus talked about prayer was he always absolute, always matter of fact, always it will happen? Knowing what we know that people pray prayers and they didn't happen. And yet he's talking like this. Is he lying? Is he confused? Let me show you why. He said in verse 8, For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, to him who knocks it will be open. Verse 9, Or what man is there among you? Man, what man? Human. Is there among you if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if his son asks for a fish, will give him a serpent, snake? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So listen, how many of you would agree with me that Jesus knows the Father better than we do? Would you agree with that? Okay, would you also agree that Jesus understands the process of prayer better than we do? Would you agree with that? Okay, and based on those two things, he knows the Father and he knows the process and knowing the Father and the process better than we do, he said, ask and it will be given. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give you. See, so we have evidence in our lives and other people's lives that, well, here's a prayer that wasn't answered. Here's a prayer that wasn't answered. And so, therefore, that cannot be true. So we're, we're taking our experiences, and let's get down to what it really is, our interpretation of these experiences, our understanding of what happened, and overruling the Son of God who knows the Father better and knows the process better. This is why you have to walk by faith and not by sight. You have to realize Jesus is not dumb and he's not dishonest. He understands everything that I understand. And yet, he knows some things that I don't know. And he's telling me that what I think is the way it works is not really the way that it works. There must be a misunderstanding on my part in how I interpret these circumstances. Jesus is telling me that based on the Father and the way he is and based on the process of prayer, this is the way it really works. See, that's why it requires faith. And when I, when I latched hold of this, to this many years ago, I saw it. I saw what I was doing. I was letting circumstances and stories from other people cloud and taint what Jesus said and discount what he said so that we sort of read it religiously and say, oh, that's great, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody said, is that really the way it happened? No, but it's the Lord. You know, you're not going like, to tell him. You just say, hey, that's great. Amen. Praise God. But you don't believe it. When I, when I caught this revelation as a young man and I realized, oh, my goodness, he's right. And what I'm doing is I'm letting my circumstances tell my mind that is not really true. We really can't attain that. And because I don't believe it, that's why it's not working. The very thing he said not to do, doubt in your heart, I'm allowing my circumstance to cause the doubt in my heart about what he said. 
And so therefore, I keep reproducing the evidence that supports my belief and barrenness. Because I don't believe him, I'm not paying attention to him, I'm paying attention to my experience. Amen. Faith doesn't come by experience. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. See, and so Jesus is saying, listen, I know him. I know how he is. I'm telling you. Now, cinch down so that you understand it. Asking is not merely thinking. Sometimes people, you know, let's pray. <laughs> what are you doing? Praying. <laughs> but the, what are you doing? Praying. <laughs> but the Bible teaches us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Do you remember when John the Baptist disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray like John the Baptist taught him. When you pray, it's the Lord's Prayer. But notice he said, say. When you pray, say. He didn't say, no, 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 Father in heaven. It goes on, get our daily bread. Is that right? See, so Mark eleven twenty three 23 is about saying and believing. Mark eleven twenty four 24 is about praying and believing. And the reason Jesus said, therefore, because saying and believing is so powerful, therefore I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive it, because when you're praying, you're saying. Did you hear me? When you're praying, you're saying. That's why Jesus said, therefore, because when you're praying, you're saying. So praying and believing is also saying and believing. Well, then why did he change the words? Here's why. Because in verse 22, you're not asking God. Whoever says to the mountain. You're not asking God for anything. You're saying to the mountain, to the debt, to the sickness, to the demon. You see what I'm talking about? You're saying to that. But in verse 24, therefore I when you think. So both are important. That's why verse 24 is built on the principle of verse 23. Because it's also saying and believing. Except for your saying is directed to God calling on him to release something. Amen. How many of you can see Jesus is so precise? Amen. All right, now watch this. Let's get back to them things. We got to cinch this up, okay? Therefore, I'm saying to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Them what? them things and you will have them things now let me show you here why this is important that Jesus said it just like that because what we'll do say you have an old jalopy car that you've been driving and it just keeps breaking down breaking down now you're spending so much money I mean you're spending more money on this thing than you would a car payment but maybe you don't have the credit to go get a loan on a car and so you're stuck with this thing and this leaking oil all over the place and man it's just unexpected uh, expenses one right after the other and so you muster your faith say Lord you said right here whatever things I ask when I pray believe that I receive them and I will have them so Lord I'm coming to you based on this and I'm saying Lord I'm calling on you for a new car to replace this piece of metal Amen. <laughs> and so, so whatever things. Now, what thing are you asking for? Come on, say it. What thing are you asking for? You're asking for a new car. I need a new car. Okay, now, watch this. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Them what? Them things. In this case, the thing is a car. Believe that you receive that thing. Now let me tell you why this is important, why Jesus is saying it like this. Because here's what we'll do. We'll say, Lord, I'm believing for a new car. I'm asking you for a new car in Jesus' name. There it is. And then you'll go on and nothing happens for a little while. Nothing happens for a little while. And somebody says, hey, what's going on with your car situation? You know what? I'm just trusting the Lord that he's going to take care of it. Doesn't that sound spiritual? I'm just trusting the Lord. He's going to take care of it. You know what? I'm, I'm just trusting the Lord. He's going to take care of it. What does that mean? 
you know what, I mean, whatever, whatever, God loves me. He's my provider. And I'm just trusting him to take care of it. See how you're not on your game? See how you changed? Yeah. See, because the thing that you prayed for was a new car. But now you're over here and you're just loosey-goosey. Well, I believe the Lord's going to take care of it. <laughs> and whether he does it with a new car or whether I... And whether he does it with a new car or whether I get a gift card to Uber, he, the Lord's going to take care of it. No, 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 no. Listen to you hear what I'm saying? This happens all the time. This ha See, we don't realize the spirit realm listens. The spirit realm listens to our words. Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. When you speak out something on the word of God, the angels listen to what you said and are responsible to go into action to bring to pass what you said. So whatever thing you prayed, you said it, and now you're over here saying something different. And now in the spirit, you don't even realize you're saying this and you're saying that. And you're praying this and you're praying that. And your, your words are just all over. We took all your words about that car situation and we just mapped them all out. It's a mess. What, what are you saying? Look, at look, you said this talking to Bob and you said this talking to Ethel over here and you said this over here in prayer and then you emailed this over here and you're, you're all over the map. You know why? Because you don't believe what you prayed. That's why. And in the spirit, you may not think it's a big deal, but in the spirit realm, you've got this whole thing twisted up. No wonder it's not going to come to pass for you. Because you don't believe what Jesus said. Whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What? Them things that you prayed for. And when you pray for it, you mean it and you stick to it. That's what I prayed for. So you, how many of you see how precise Jesus is? Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Clear. Be clear. And follow the clearness all the way through. Follow the clearness. Now I've got to add this and then I'm going to give you some examples to cinch it up before we go. Watch. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. Here's the question. When? When do you believe that you receive them? What did Jesus say? See, it's, it's in this verse. Let's look at it again. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them. When you pray, believe that you receive them. Not when you get it. Too late. It, it won't happen. When you pray, believe that you receive them. And you will, that's future. You will have them. See, it's admitting, no, no, it's, it, it's not necessarily going to happen right there when you pray. No, you will, Jesus is being honest, you will at some time in the future have them. But you can't wait until you will to believe that you receive them. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them. So when I'm praying, Father, I'm coming to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I'm calling on you for this. Jesus said, Right when you pray, believe that you receive it. Believe that you receive it. When you pray, believe that you receive it. Is that what it says? Yeah. Therefore, I say to you, when you pray, no, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and then you will have it. So in your heart, you believe it when you pray, and you grab onto it, and I got it in my heart. And then you will have it in your hand later. See, Jesus is telling us the way the process, but you've got to receive it. How do you know when you received it? How do you know? Like, for example, uh, say my wife and I are planning a vacation. We're not right now, but say we are. And say we're saying, you know what, man, let's, let's, let's believe God. Let's, let's go somewhere special. Let's go to Paris. 
Let's go to Paris. And then one day I'm at work. My wife called me. Honey, this is amazing. I got us a deal. I found a deal. I mean, uh, I can't believe it. I, this deal is incredible. $99 to Paris includes flights, first class, five-star hotel, a view of the Eiffel Tower, includes a rental car, luxury rental car. Is that right? And includes... $3,000 of meal vouchers for the restaurants in Paris. Now, that doesn't exist, but I'm just, just, just say she did this. Now, let me just tell you, my wife is pretty savvy. She's not going to just get some hoax or whatever. She knows what websites are reputable and all that. But if she calls me and says, check this out. Now, let me tell you, a few years ago, she did score this incredible deal, by the way, that was hard to believe, but it was real, and we enjoyed it, I tell you. Okay, but say she said that to me. Now, I'm over here on the other side of the phone and say, Gotta be kidding, 99 bucks. It was this thing, blah, 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 that, that, that's it. And I got the confirmation. I called the hotel. I talked to them. They said, Yep, this, that is a deal. That, we, you, I've got you locked in. Here you are. It's done. It's paid for. Can you imagine? That? She calls me now. Now I'm listening to her on the phone. And she tells me this. And I get off the phone. Somebody might say, What was that all about? Well, check this out. Well, we've been planning this vacation in Paris, but. My wife found this deal, 99 bucks. We're going to stay in a five-star hotel. We're going to fly first class, have a luxury rental car paid for, and all this. Now I'm already excited. I'm already telling somebody about it as if it's real, as if it's true. Why? Because I believed her. So now I'm not going to go searching on the Internet to try to find a deal. Why? We got a deal. We already got the deal. We already locked it in. You understand what I'm saying? How do you know? My wife told me. So based on what she said, we got it. So I'm not going to go searching. Why would I search? We already got the deal. I believed I received it. You listen to me? You know when you believed you received it by the way you talk, by the way you act. If you're still searching for a deal, you don't believe it. Is that right? See, and so Jesus came and said, this is it. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you see it and you will have it. Man, we ought to say, well, then bless God. That's the way it is. Then I will have it. Thank God. I receive it. I receive it right now. Well, amen. What are you going to do? Thank you, Lord. You're going to get excited. You're going to get excited. You don't see it with your eyes yet, but you're going to get excited. Man, I, I, look what happened happened. I got it. I got it in here. And he said, you will have them. Let me give you an example of this. Okay. Now I caught hold of these things as a young man. I caught hold of these things. I saw it and I, I saw that they're true and they're real. And I, I told you, I worked at Jack in the box. I worked at in and out burger, but I had a friend who worked in a grocery store. And now by this time, I know I'm called to Bible college now. And so I realized I got to get a job that pays enough. And my friend had gotten promoted in the grocery store and he's making good money. So whatever reason, I don't know why, for whatever reason, I had it in my mind. I wanted to work at the grocery store and work for a promotion. So I came before the Lord and I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm laying hold of this by faith, a box boy job. I don't know what they call them today, but that's what they call them back then. Box boy, bagging groceries, chasing carts. Lord, I'm laying hold of this. I'm laying hold of this by faith. Okay, so now I start going around to put in applications at grocery stores. I pass by banks, I pass by restaurants, I pass by other business. No need to stop there. No, I'm not going to stop and put an application anywhere else. No, I got my faith set on a grocery store job. Everybody understand what I'm saying? See, because I'm believing I received that, I'm not putting my application anywhere else. I'm not just getting a job. No, I didn't say. The thing I said was not just any old job. No, I said a box boy job at a grocery store. You with me? So now I'm acting on my faith, only putting in applications at the grocery store because that's what I said I believed. See, and I was learning this. I'm learning that somebody else may come and say, hey, they're hiring over here. Well, that's great. But that's not what I'm going to do. Well, they're paying a million dollars. I don't care. Well, maybe I would have cared. Say, Lord, that thing I was asking for, I ain't asking for that anymore. I'm asking for this thing, right? 
But see, I wasn't paying attention to what everybody else was saying. They're hiring here. They're hiring. No, that's not what I asked for. I asked for this. However, I went around all the grocery stores in the area, put in applications, and everybody say, okay, thank you very much. Well, we don't have anything right now, but we'll contact you if we get anything. You know the typical thing that they say. And then send me down the road. So hey, I went, I went all, all the grocery stores that I knew of in the area. And I'm standing in faith now, believing I received it. And I'm acting on my faith. Nothing. And now the pressure's on my faith. Now the pressure's on. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was driving down Azusa. Was that Azusa Avenue or Azusa Boulevard? Azusa Avenue? Azusa Avenue toward Amar in West Covina. And I'm coming up toward Amar. And I just said to the Lord, Lord, I don't know where else to go. I'm believing I received this box boy job. But I've been to every grocery store in the area that I know of. I don't know where to go. And I'm telling you, I just heard, turn right. Instantly, I thought, that's just me. That's just me. That's just my mind. I'm conjuring something. I'm, I'm desperate here. But I thought, well, I don't have any other place to go. <laughs> so I turned right on Amar. And as soon as I turned right and started driving, my mind said, there's nothing down here. There's nothing down here. Why am I driving? That, that just must have been me. But I drove a few blocks, and as I drove a few blocks, then I thought, well, you know what? Now, now I remember there is a grocery store, Stater Brothers, down here on the right. But I've already been there. I already put in an application there, and they said they got nothing. But I got right up by that Stater Brothers, pulling, coming up right to the driveway, and I just heard, turn in here. I thought, oh. Uh, I mean, it, I'm glad nobody's in the car, because I'm just thinking they're going to ask me, why are you turning in here? I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to explain it. It's embarrassing. So I just turned in there and parked in the parking lot, parked in his parking space, and I, I just said, Lord, Lord, you know I've been here already. I've already put in an application here. They said, there's nothing here. And so I sit there and silence. <laughs> so I got out of the car, started walking toward the store, and I saw in the window a sign that said, meat department strike, now accepting applications. I didn't see that last time. So I thought, huh, I wonder if that's what God's doing here. If it is God. You know, I, come on, you don't know. Right. So I walk in there and I ask to talk to the manager like I did the last time there. He finally came out. And I said, you know, I saw the sign in the window and I wondered if I could put in an application. He said, do you have any, any experience in the meat department? I said, no, sir. You never worked in the meat department before? No, sir. Do you know anybody that's worked in the meat department? No, sir. And I'm thinking in my mind, at in and out and Jack in the Box, they didn't even let me flip a burger. <laughs> All I did was clean. And here's what he said. He said, well, I don't know if we have any box boy jobs open right now. I didn't bring that up. He said, but let me take your name and number, and if we do, I'll call you. Within a few days, they called and said, we got a box boy job open. Are you listening to me? Yeah. We got a box boy job open, and they hired me. Wow. Now, now let me, let me show you whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. I could have started putting applications in other places. But see, the pressure was on my faith, but I just went right back to the Lord and said, hey, I don't know what else you want me to do. I'm standing on your word here. And then the word of wisdom. Turn right here. You know why? God wants to help us to receive. He's not trying to keep us from it. He wants us to get our prayers answered. But he's allowing us to stretch here so that in the, the tougher circumstances, we don't back down. Now, now here's what happened. Now I'm hired. But I knew, oh, well, I can't pay for Bible college on this pay. 
I, I need to get promoted. So instantly, I, I, I said, I'm going to set my faith. Now, see, this is what we do. We go from one to the next. We set our faith on this, and then when we get that, we set our faith on next, and we just go from glory to glory by faith. Faith to faith and glory to glory go together. You listen to me? So now I grab Psalm 75. King James, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south. God's the judge sets one down, puts down another, and I began to lay hold of that. Father, your word says this. doesn't come from my manager and assistant manager. It comes from you. And so I'm believing this, and boy, that's when God said, okay, you're looking to me, then you're going to do it my way. Bond servants, serve your masters according to the flesh as unto the Lord, as if you're working for God. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but doing the will of God from the heart. Oh, and he listens to everything I say. He watches everything I do. When the managers are not watching, he's watching. So all this stuff with the other people at the grocery store, what they say, the criticism, them sloughing off when the manager's not looking and then working hard when he's around, I knew, well, that's not me because I'm not looking to my manager to promote me. I'm going way up. And so I got to work for my managers as unto the Lord. So see, now I'm hustling. Now I'm not criticizing and God's working on all this stuff. And, and I'm at the bottom of the list here on all the schedules. And the box boy uh, category is way down here. I'm at the bottom of the box boy category. The guy at the top has been there two and a half years. He keeps asking to get promoted. And I just started. But I had to get that out of my mind and say, no, I don't care. It's not going to take me two and a half years. I don't have two and a half years. No, I'm laying hold of this in Jesus' name. You put one down and set me up. If you have to set him aside and her aside and everybody else aside, I'm looking to you. I'm in a different category than everybody else. I'm a child of the living God and I have covenant and promises. You see what I'm saying? You have to know who you are. And so, five and a half months working as unto the Lord and I tell you what, they promoted me and now this guy at the top was still there pushing three years now, bagging my groceries and chasing my carts. And let me tell you, I was not arrogant, not cocky. I would, did not look down on him. But in my heart, I just knew it's because I've tapped into something that the world can't tap into. This man was not, an, he was not a believer. And so the Bible says, weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. I wept for him, but rejoiced for me. Amen. You see, what I'm, you see what I'm talking about? See, this is the way we do it. But I had to believe for that thing. Not just, well, maybe some other job will have a, a better pay. Oh, no, 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 no. I, what I set my faith on now that I'm hired is promotion here. That's what I prayed for right here. And that's exactly what happened. Let me close with this. Just yesterday, I got an email from... The four square denomination sent out a testimony, but the testimony was about a pastor couple from the rock. And I, I remember the testimony very well because Jordan and Rachel Wall, they were pregnant in 2017. But Rachel went to one of her appointments now and they're doing the ultrasound. And the, the lady doing the, the ultrasound, she said, how many weeks along did you say you were? She said, 18 to 20. She said, the baby's not measuring that far along. And so they started doing more tests, sending her to the specialist. And they, they broke the news to them. The baby stopped growing. Heartbeat's still there, still alive. Baby stopped growing. And they kept week after week. It wasn't just a test or two. Week after week, they're tracking this. And they began to do more tests and finally diagnosed the baby with dwarfism. And said, not only that, but the baby has uh, an indention in the skull. It's caved in in a certain part. Well, how many of you know as parents, you don't want to hear that? You don't want to hear all this, right? And weeks are going on. It's not like just a one-time thing. And then it's, no, weeks are going on. And the news just keeps getting worse. Corroborating the story. Yeah, the weeks are going on, but the, the growth is not. 
So I'll never forget, Kimberly and I, you know, we were at our Christmas Eve services. It was before the Christmas Eve services, but when we came to the Christmas Eve service, Jordan and Rachel had contacted us. Now, we'd prayed generally about this. They'd had people pray. They'd been praying, standing on the word. They're people of faith. But they, they said, hey, can you guys catch hands and pray with us? That's scriptural, isn't it? Can you guys catch hands and pray with us? And we said, absolutely. So in between one of the Christmas Eve services, right back here in the green room, they came in and said, we said, tell, tell us what the latest is. What, what have you heard? Nothing wrong with hearing what the latest reports are. Amen. And so they told us, and it was bad. Been diagnosed with dwarfism. These weeks keep going on, and the baby's not growing, lagging behind. And it's persistent. And so we caught hands, and we began to agree with the prayers that had already been prayed in the name of Jesus. Normally, I'll have in a pregnant lady, the lady or her husband put their hand on the stomach, and then I'll put my hand on their hand, because I want to lay hands, but I want to be respectful, too. I don't just lay my hands anywhere on a woman, or a man, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> and we prayed in the name of Jesus and then she began to go back to the doctor and they began to do ultrasounds and one of those ultrasounds they said your baby's growing again Amen. and listen and not at a normal pace but at an accelerated pace your baby's growing faster than babies grow in the womb. And then weeks are going by, and then doing the test and everything, and here's the announcement. Your baby is now completely caught up with how many weeks you are pregnant. Amen. Amen. Thank God. And guess what? When it caught up, it slowed down to the normal pace. Didn't, up, didn't end up having a 22-pound baby. How many of you say, thank God for that? Huh? I heard more ladies say, thank God, than I did men. Some of you guys saying, I'd like to see it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they had this baby, healthy. Skull was not indented. No dwarfism. In fact, let me tell you. It was so dramatic while they were still pregnant. They looked and said, we're taking you off the risk list. Even though we've got all these tests that say that there's a problem, we cannot find any problem now. We're taking you completely off the risk list. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Come on. You know why Jesus is teaching us this? Not just so we can know it. The Lord's saying to us, you have things you need. And I'm telling you, ask and believe that you receive them when you pray. And don't change it. Don't alter it. Don't expand it in unbelief. Stick with it, and you will have them. That's why Jesus is teaching us this. He wants us to have them. But he won't compromise the process for us. We have to do it the way that it works. Come on, bow your head with me. Talk to the Lord right now. Talk to the Lord right now. Say, thank you, Jesus, you're talking to me. Thank you, Jesus, you're talking to me. <laughs> mm. Lord, despite my experience, I lay hold of this word. I believe you're, tr you're truthful. I believe you're honest. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tell the Lord right now, say, Lord, I received this word. You want to answer my prayers. <laughs> you love to answer prayer. I believe this is true. I believe it's true. I believe it's true. Praise God.
Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Let's stand together. I want us to say some things. Somebody might be thinking, hey, give us a chance to pray. Okay, you, you can, this is not just for the service. And plus, not everybody's ready to pray and believe that they receive it right now. Some of you need to go back and listen to these messages over and over to stir the faith so that when you pray, you believe that you receive it. Because often you pray, but you didn't quite believe you receive it. What do you do? Muster your faith and pray again and believe you receive it. And if you didn't believe you receive it then, muster your faith and pray again and believe that you receive it. And when it catches, hang on to it. Amen. And listen, if the faith starts to wane, shut up. Don't change your words. Muster your faith back up until you're back on those things that you prayed for and thank God for them. Everybody with me? Jesus is so wonderful to teach us these things so we can see God move in our lives. Jesus was not wishy-washy with his words, and we shouldn't be either. So let's say some things. Everybody out loud say, Father God, I believe the word. Your word is truth. And the Lord Jesus is teaching me so precisely in such detail, and I'm seeing it. Now I'm asking for your strength by the Holy Spirit to lock onto this, to understand it, and to walk in it so I can see my prayers answered and Jesus can be glorified. I believe the Word of God, and therefore I believe that I receive what I pray, and I will have them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands in agreement today. Amen. Amen. Woo. Praise God. Thank God. Bow your head one more time. If you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, for whatever reason, you're not sure that you're saved today, that you're born again, then you're going to pray right along with us right now. Mean it in your heart. Let's make Jesus Lord today everybody together father god thank you for sending jesus to take my place well i trust that you heard the lord speak to you isn't it amazing how god can speak to us in any way at any time and knows just what to say hey for more resources for more information you can always go to jerrydearman.com and when you do don't forget to subscribe to our brand new Solid Lives magazine. This is filled with articles that will strengthen you and events to build your faith. And so we just want to get to you as much as possible to be able to help you to be the person that God has called you to be. God bless you and have a great day.